So you know how the Quran is basically a continuation of the Bible. What, Ilyan? I, I thought the Quran was its own thing. Okay, both of these statements are somewhat correct. They're each half true because the Quran is kind of a continuation of the Bible, but it is also its own thing. And a lot of my English speaking audience has been trying to read the Quran and then come into the discord being like, Ilyan, what in the world is this and how do I read it? Let's get into some of the similarities and differences between the Bible and the Quran. And we'll see whose God is truly the strongest. Just kidding, they're the same God. And that's our first similarity. There's one God and it's the God of Abraham. Isaac and Noah and Jacob and Moses. The best way that I could describe the Quran to an English-speaking person who is familiar with the Bible is as a linguistic chaos of archetypal Judeo-Christian lore. And by that, I mean you got all the big players across the Old Testament and the New Testament. Most importantly, Abraham, Noah, Moses, Jesus, John, other disciples that we care less about. But unlike the Bible, the Quran is non-linear. The Bible that we know today tries to follow, to a certain extent, a kind of timeline so that it tells, to a degree, a chronological story. But in the Qur'an, plot and historical accuracy or detail are secondary to the symbolism and the moral lessons that the Qur'an is trying to put forth. So, for example, in the Bible, we got the one story about the creation of man. Sometimes these get extrapolated into two or three from other vague parts of the biblical text. But ultimately, there's the one standard story on the creation of Adam and Eve. In the Qur'an, the story is told several times throughout the book. It's interwoven into the text, like other stories. So you'll find it in different chapters, and every time you find it, it's a little bit different. In one chapter, for example, it's the standard God creates man out of dirt and breathes life into him. But in another story, he doesn't breathe life. He just says, be, and Adam is. And then in another story, when God is getting ready to create a king or lord or viceroy on earth, the angels stage a protest. Like, are you seriously about to create something that might possibly destroy everything you've done so far? We've been here. We've been taking orders. We've been working with you. But alas, there was no union to protect these angels. And CEO Allah did not care. He created us and he let it be known that we were his absolute favorites. He made the protesting angels bow down to Adam. And in part, that is the purpose of the repetition of this story. To emphasize just how much love Allah, or God, has for us. The implicit theme is that Allah is the proudest mama. She just wants to show off her baby. Allah is so in love with mankind that the angels are jealous. If we were just going to take the spiritual lesson here, it's that we were created out of obsessive motherly love. What do you think?